lot of people, a whole lot of MAGA hats, uh, all these people who uh, supposedly love the police uh, do not want to comply uh, with the police orders tonight. Um, and things, as we approach this curfew, uh, we, we may see some movement in the next few minutes. Wolf? Yeah, this curfew is going to affect in a few seconds from now. Uh, let's see what happens. Let's see if the police actually move in. Alex Marquardt, you're in a different location. Uh, are, are folks ignoring the curfew where you are as well? Uh, they are ignoring the curfew, uh, Wolf. I just want to piggyback on what Donnie was saying, uh, that there are uh, a, a huge, a large number of, of Trump supporters here. I will say they are uh, entirely peaceful uh, at the moment. There is this long line of metropolitan police, so that's the Washington, uh, D.C. police, who in, in the past half hour have slowly, methodically, peacefully uh, pushed uh, these Trump supporters back from the Capitol. You can see... You can see the western side of the White House, of the Capitol building, excuse me, um, that has been entirely cleared. Wolf, that entire lawn this afternoon was filled with people. Now, as we have gotten closer to the curfew, uh, we have seen that area cleared. Um, so a lot of this crowd, the vast majority, I would say, of this crowd that was out here this afternoon has melted away. Uh, but there is still a large number uh, who have gathered down here. If you know Washington, D.C., uh, this is uh, the Capitol reflecting pool. And at least for now, Wolf, uh, they show uh, no sign of going home. There has been some tear gas fired. Uh, our colleagues have seen that. We have seen that uh, throughout the afternoon. Uh, there are a lot of riot police in full riot gear with gas masks. The ones that you're looking at now uh, do not have that same sort of gear. So it's a, a bit of a mix. This has been uh, a cooperative effort between local police departments, not just from Washington, D.C., but also from Virginia and Maryland, as well as their federal counterparts, U.S. Capitol Police up in the Capitol, uh, as well as various uh, federal agencies, and, of course, the National Guard that we now know has been fully mobilized by Mayor Bowser. This curfew now in effect. Well, if you've been asking about arrests, uh, if we go by past precedent, uh, though in, when we've seen curfews in the past, that doesn't necessarily mean they're just going to start arresting people on site because they're out and about, uh, but that certainly could happen as the evening wears on uh, and people stay out. Uh, so the curfew is now in effect, but these Trump supporters, many of them, still out here, Wolf. Yeah, it's an awful situation. The curfew now is in effect, uh, but uh, I don't see uh, the police going about uh, starting to tell these people uh, they're going to be about to be arrested for violating the curfew. They should not be on the streets of Washington, D.C. right now. They should be heading to their hotels or to their homes or someplace else or just get out of the area because the curfew, D.C. curfew, is now in effect. Uh, John King just got a statement. Let me read a sentence or two from the okay. former president, uh, George W. Bush. Actually, you have it, uh, John. Go ahead and read the statement for us. Well, if I will read it, and it is striking just the contrast of the last Republican president, George W. Bush, compared here to the current president, Republican president, Donald Trump. Laura and I are watching the scenes of mayhem and mayhem and unfolding at the seat of our nation's government in disbelief and disarray. Dismay, I'm sorry, former President Bush says. It is a sickening and heartbreaking sight. This is how election results are disputed in a banana republic, not our democratic republic. I am appalled by the reckless behavior of some political leaders since the election and by the lack of respect shown today for our institutions, our traditions, and our law enforcement. The violent assault on the Capitol and disruption of a constitutionally mandated meeting of Congress was undertaken by people whose passions have been inflamed by falsehoods and false hopes. Insurrection could do grave damage to our nation and, the rep and reputation. In the United States of America, it is the fundamental responsibility of every patriotic citizen to support the rule of law. To those who are disappointed in the results of the election, our country is more important than the politics of the moment. Let the officials elected by the people fulfill their duties and represent our voices in peace and safety. May God continue to bless the United States of America. Now, again, George Bush is not a perfect man and he was not a perfect president, but Wolf, someone who understands, man himself, lost the popular vote, won the presidency. It was a controversial time. Lived through the Iraq War, a very controversial time, but served two terms as president. In the middle there, he doesn't mention President Trump, 
but he says this assault today undertaken by people whose passions have been inflamed by fal falsehoods and false hopes. We know who he's talking about when he says that. Yeah, and he says, let the officials elected by the people fulfill their duties and represent our voices in peace and safety. But we know one person who was elected by the people, that would be the president of the United States, who's clearly not fulfilling his duty as commander-in-chief and as president of the United States. It's interesting, John, that the statement released by former President uh, George W. Bush is entitled, A Statement on the Insurrection at the Capitol. Uh, that's a very strong word, insurrection. Uh, but it's a fair word. He's calling it like he sees it. And uh, George W. Bush, again, whether you supported him or not, whether you agreed with him or not, he was always plain spoken. Uh, and he's calling, and it's also true, look, there's, it's just a fact. There is no love lost uh, between the Bush family uh, and President Trump. Uh, and so there is some history, if you will. Uh, but remember, George W. Bush, a president for two terms, the son of a president who also served as vice president, a man who, again, you know, there can be a debate about his faults and policy, and people can have that debate. He so respected the office. He so respected the building. He so respected the institutions of government. He so respected the relationship. Uh, he so respected even when he sparred with it, the news media. A president who understood because of how he was raised, because of the family he came from, because of his public service in Texas and his public service in Washington, he understood there are lines. There are ways to protest. There are ways not to protest. So, uh, look, there's a debate about this president. There's a debate in the Republican Party about what to do now that this president is leaving. George W. Bush, largely silent since he has left office. He speaks very rarely. And he speaks when he thinks he is compelled to speak. And so a very important statement here, talking about the mayhem, insurrection, as you say. He doesn't mention President Trump, but there's just no question. Falsehoods, false hopes, and then essentially calling on other Republicans to step up. Uh, that's the main point of this statement, calling on the other Republicans who will get back in that Capitol building as soon as the security forces tell them it is secure and it is safe for them to go back in it. The former President George W. Bush hoping, hoping, Look, the Bush name has become a dirty word in the Trump era of Republican politics, but hoping that people, uh, I'll say, look to their better angels and get it right when they come back into that building. Yeah, this is a sick, sick situation that has developed here in the nation's capital, and you got to quickly uh, and directly uh, point to the president of the United States for failure to do his job. Uh, presidential historian Doug Brinkley is joining us right now. You know, Doug, uh, give us a little historic perspective on what is unfolding in Washington. I've been a reporter here for a long time. I haven't seen anything like this. Nothing like this at all, Wolf. I mean, this is the siege of the U.S. Capitol. Um, you know, we usually have had the word siege in a war, like in the Civil War, or, you know, perhaps uh, the Democratic 1968 in Chicago. But here we are watching American citizens, fellow citizens, break in and vandalize our U.S. Capitol, rioting in the streets of Washington, um, disregarding um, public and federal property. Um, it's a heinous moment. And usually when we think of being attacked in Washington, you tend to think, remember, you know, the War of 1812 uh, when the British attacked us, or 9-11 and the scare that the Capitol was going to be a target, and you had an anthrax scare going on now. This group of Trump supporters who refuse to accept um, the outcome of this election have now terrorizing the entire Washington, D.C. metro area and are ostensibly shutting down other aspects of our government and country. The good news is there are surveillance cameras in the Capitol. People are going to have photographic evidence. And some of the faces that we've been watching on TV today will end up doing serious prison time for their crimes against the United States today. And what's your perspective, uh, Doug, uh, on the behavior of the current president of the United States who has 14 days left in office? Oh. I think Donald Trump is is uh, is ill. He's uh, we've known he's an autocrat. We've known that he has a dictatorial bent. We know we know he has no sense of history. But since the election, his ego has been so bruised that he has organized an insurrection against the U.S. federal government. He has now burned his bridge with Vice President Pence. 
who could have perhaps pardoned him um, if Pence had become president for a day or a week. And now there's talk of the 25th Amendment. Uh, people at the Department of Defense or CIA, State Department, is Trump stable for the job? Uh, it appears not, not from the little video that he did on the White House lawn today saying he loves how wonderful he loves these people that are breaking into the Capitol and turning people to uh, flee in a sense of terror. We have two people that are shot. We have a curfew going. And Donald Trump will be implicated in this. This is a day of sedition. It's a word you usually use with, you know, the John Adams era you know, or something in American history, and here we're witnessing it in real time. I think that you almost have Mike Pence right now is serving as the um, commander-in-chief of our country, while anybody in, in any federal bureau has to be keeping a close eye on Donald Trump because he's, he's acting and thinking in an irrational way. And, and in order for the 25th Amendment to the Constitution, Doug, to be uh, really going into effect, it's the vice president who has to initiate all of this. The vice president has to insist that the current president is simply unfit to be commander in chief, to be president of the United States. So tell us a little bit about that. Well, that's exactly right, Wolf. And um, Vice President Pence now, if he chooses to, could start trying to organize that 25th Amendment. Uh, our country is being held hostage right now by Donald Trump. Uh, Mitch McConnell and um, Speaker Pelosi can't even meet on the Capitol today. It was supposed to be the day of our great coronation to celebrate uh, the beginning of a, a new presidency for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. So I think we now have to go into our Constitution kit bag and find what we can do to control Donald Trump. And certainly the 25th Amendment is there. It's an extreme measure. I never thought, Wolf, I'd ever think that could even occur in our lifetime. But we're living in very weird and strange times as all the images of um, mayhem going on in Washington, D.C. shows us. Yeah, and if you want to uh, appreciate uh, how, uh, uh, let's say, unstable the president is right now with only 14 days to go, look at this tweet that he just posted. Uh, and let me get your quick reaction, Doug, before I move on. Uh, this is what the president of the United States just said. Hard to believe, but I'll, I'll repeat it. These are the things and events that happen when a sacred landslide election victory is so unceremoniously and viciously stripped away from great patriots who have been badly and unfairly treated for so long. Go home with love and in peace. Remember this day forever.